Hello again, this is Matt Petrowski. I am building my own house, and I'm doing it within SketchUp. Um, claim to fame, I am the son of a contractor, but I never really entered the world, the building industry. I haven't been in it for a long time. I am not a ar licensed architect. I am a computer software programmer, and I also happen to be a user interface designer. So I know a little bit about design, but I know enough about uh, software that I'm using SketchUp to build my own house. So you're here for the journey. Let's take a look at what we're uh, walking through today. All right, here we are in the project, and I am walking you through everything I've done to get to this point using some really quick tools in order to get a home close to the point where it's architecturally correct, you go through some civil engineering and then you get this thing approved and it's pretty much as good as, um, it's as good as it gets. We are using SketchUp, which is what real builders and uh, architects use. So the cool thing about SketchUp is that it's got all the plugins that you need in order to do what you want to do. Now, there's only two that I became familiar with, and it was thanks to the SketchUp Essentials. In fact, thank you very much. I believe it's Justin, Justin Geis. Um, he has taught me so much about this whole industry. From what I understand, I've learned through his videos, he is an estimator. I want to know what are the costs to my trusses, to all the different studs that I have to use. What are all the costs? Because then I really know what's going on when somebody bids or quotes something. I know how much they're charging for labor because I know what the actual costs are relative to uh, whether they get a discount and I don't or not. But um, if you are an architect, if you are a builder, if you're anybody out there, um, say whatever you want to say. You're na if you've got bad, nasty comments, I'm sure you'll leave them down below or give me the thumbs down. But if you like the information I'm providing, subscribe, give me the thumbs up. Um, I'm simply just going along as I learn. Uh, the most I did when I was a young kid was be on the job so sites. I was the cleanup guy. Uh, my grandfather was an electrician. I do know about the electrician, the plumbing. I pretty much got exposed to a lot of the areas, but... Uh, we are doing this. So I showed you in the previous video how to make the walls here and to learn that you have to account for, this is everything that an architect knows, is they know the area, they know the climates, um, what zone you're in. I'm building in a climate zone of three. In fact, there's climate zone maps that you can search for. Uh, search for building climate zone in order to find out about the area that you're either building in or where you currently are and then that gives you information about what you need in terms of your insulation or what you're going to want uh, in your insulation, your walls. Well, I chose to build my walls just simply using a wall plugin. So the key thing that we need to do is we need to understand how a wall is built and what to account for, and what's going to be more efficient versus less efficient when we're designing our house. Now with SketchUp here, I got my exterior walls, they are the width that I want, and then I just dragged them up with the standard push-pull tool. Now that's great and all, but it isn't going to help me out when it comes to the point of figuring out the costs of the materials for this house, because I need to know all of the individual pieces. So I went with a plugin that I did pay for, I believe I bought the BIM or the Building Information Management, I think BIM stands for. If I'm wrong, correct me down below. I don't mind being corrected. We all make mistakes and we're all learning. Um, so this is the plugin right here. In fact, uh, we'll go to the extensions. We can see that I've got two installed here, the Medeek wall and the Medeek truss. Now on the Medeek wall, there's all kinds of things, if you've never built a house or you don't know anything about the terminology, that you need to understand uh, or come become familiar with in order to get used to them. But the cool thing is, is this plugin helps you do it. I already showed you in the previous video that you can simply build a wall and then search for it. So let's talk about walls. So I'm going to click the wall here tool, and on Windows things are a little bit nicer in order to work quickly. Notice that here on the Macintosh, I click, and then um, this comes up the second time, but if I'm clicked here and then I click once, sometimes it doesn't come up and then I have to click in order to actually uh, activate between these palettes and this. I don't know why that is in the Macintosh, but it's just how it is. So when we bring up this wall and it shows me 
what I'm going to be making, what we get to choose are a number of options. Now what I should do is I am going to go back, which I can do with undo here. I got rid of all my labels um, and we'll go back to the point where I don't have my walls. All right, so I undid all the way back to where I want to draw my walls on this floor plan that I have. Now the key thing is this is where you start to use your layers. I showed you about layers. Uh, and it's super important. I showed you that I'm using 2021 SketchUp. These folders are super help helpful. In fact, I suggest making a folder for each of the levels that you're going to have. In mine, I've got a basement, I've got my floor one, my floor two, and then I'm going to have my roof. Boy, learning about roofs, what, that was an experience. Um, so we're at the easy stage here. I've got a basement and then I've got a floor. Let's pretend that I'm on my basement. So within my basement, I'm going to create a tag for the interior versus the exterior. It just makes it easy in order to be able to turn off the exterior walls and see into the interior or from the top down, being able to take all the interior walls away. So to start off with, it really doesn't matter what your layer is. You're able to move things from one layer to another layer, but there's a very important aspect of the Medique wall that uh, we need to know with regards to layers, and I'll tell you that right off the bat. When we lay out a wall, this is an automation plugin. It is automating what you would normally do for yourself in uh, SketchUp by creating all of these things. All it does is it just packages them all up into com a component, or actually probably just a bunch of groups, and makes it really nice. So on our wall, we've got an interior, exterior wall, we've got an exterior, exterior wall, and an interior, interior wall. Now, everything on the outside is going to be an interior and exterior wall. Everything on the inside is going to be just an interior, interior wall. I have not yet used exterior, interior. One of the key things to know, and I wish uh, I wish this plugin worked with feet and inches, but in this particular case, the Medeek wall plugin only works in inches. So you, if you're not familiar, you're not in the construction industry, you're gonna have to have your calculator out, and you're probably going to be best served by writing down what the standard common dimensions are. And that's basically everything that goes from 12, 24 is two feet, 36, three feet, 48, uh, four feet, once you get used to those, you're starting to think like a builder and think in terms of those um, absolute inches. Now, the key thing about walls is you notice here that it says eight inches, one and one eighth inch. So let's talk about why that case is. And no matter whether you're gonna do an eight foot high wall, a nine foot or a 10 foot, you're almost always going to wanna throw on this little one and one eighth inch. And I'll show you why. So we are going to draw out uh, a what the default is right here, an eight foot wall. We also have our stud size. So we are going to either be doing an interior wall, which is typically at uh, a two by four, but for our exterior walls, we're going on my build, we're going to be doing a two by six. If you're in a colder climate, you may be building a two by eight or even a two by 10 wall. Um, I don't know who's building a two by 12 wall, but that is a foot wide wall where you would be able to pack so much insulation in that, it'd be crazy. But I'm gonna be building a two by six wall, and you can see right here that it comes up with the stud depth, and it shows you, oh, a, a two by six is not actually six, it's five by five, and it's one by whatever. A two by four, you can see it goes to 3.5 in terms of its dimensions. So with the two by six wall, what you have to do with the Medique plugin currently, um, as of version 176B, which is what I'm using, is once you make changes in here and it becomes a light red, you have to click update. So I click update and I'm now ready to draw my walls. Now the key thing is the starting point that you start at, that's what determines. I could start up in this corner, but it would, really wouldn't make sense. And I should, I didn't put all of my exterior walls, but I think you'll get the point and you'll be able to draw your own walls, uh, draw them all. So I think you wanna start and go clockwise if I'm not mistaken, because if I click here and then I start to drag out, I get this green line as opposed to a red line. Sometimes it shows you a red line. But it's really cool that as you drag, you can see that you get that dimension right there. And of course, it's the axes or the axis that shows you I'm on one of the axis. Right there, I'm on the um, 
green axis. So as I uh, drag here, and again, go back to my first video ever, if you're not used to, while a tool is selected, being able to move things and get your view so that you can continue to work with the tool that you want. First video I ever shot in this series, super important. So I click that endpoint, and it'll create the wall, but it'll allow me to create this additional wall. Oh, that's why it's green and red. Um, it's the axes. Oh, you learn something new every time. It's just showing you what axis uh, you are on. So as I zoom out here, um, I can see that I've got this in the way, so I wanna be able to move this out of the way, go all the way to the inner point, and then go to uh, this point and draw my wall. I know you're not interested in seeing somebody actually drag things around, so I'll just do this really quickly and be done with it, move on to what we need to know. Ah, undo that. Well, there we go. That's one thing, uh, I accidentally hit that wall uh, out of order. In fact, it's a good opportunity. We will see how we can uh, re-blend this into the next wall, add, continue to add walls to this. But the whole point of what I'm trying to tell you about the walls is that when we look at this, we need to total things up. Um, accidentally zoomed there. That's always good to get you back to where you need to go. So if you uh, accidentally orbit and zoom out, hit that uh, zoom extents option. Another really good trick when you're building is if you want to focus on something, when you click on that thing, you can right click and you can choose this option right here, zoom selection. So if you want to really zoom in on something that's super far away, that is a super helpful tip when you are uh, working on your house. But the whole point of walls here, as you can see the way that a wall works is you have the actual stud which has its own height, but then you have this thing called the bottom plate, and then you also have this thing called the top plate. Now depending on how you're building your house, you have to account for the fact that the easiest way to build a wall is to simply work with this stud in a standard cut height. So the industry works by simply cutting studs when they deliver them, and if they're already cut to the width that you can use on an 8-foot or a 9-foot or a 10-foot wall, then that's the best thing to do. Because then nobody has to cut them, and the framers are able to put them up really quickly because they don't have to cut them. If you don't account for the fact that the total height of your wall, if I just put an 8-foot straight wall or a nine foot or a 10 foot, then what happens is the height of this stud is probably gonna have to be cut down. That means somebody has to come in and cut a little bit off of each one of these studs on the wall. So when you're going to be planning out your wall, you always wanna make sure that you are going to um, account for the fact that you've got 1.5 right here, and then you've got another 1.5 right here, and on the bottom as well. Now in my case, as I right click this wall and choose on the edit wall assembly. So this is how you can always within the Medique plugin um, modify the wall to account for what you want to do. So when I edit this, one of the things that I'm doing in my basement as I zoom out here is I am going to insulate on the, the actual slab of the basement. So Typically down at the bottom here, if you think about molding, molding all the pretty stuff gets uh, nailed in and it needs something to nail into. The bottom plate is what the the molding is going into, the base plate, the, uh, the base molding. So because I'm putting insulation on the bottom level of my house, I'm going to see that on the... Uh, items right here, we've got top plate quantities and bottom plate quantities. So the cool thing about the Medique plugin is it allows you to specify however many pieces of lumber you want. These are things that you have to figure out before you're going to make your walls, otherwise you're going to get down the road and you're going to have to go to all of your walls and make all of these changes. Of course, it's really not that big of a deal because with the Medique plugin, you can just go in and just change the wall to whatever you want. If you need additional top plate, great. But then you're going to have to lift your second story up and your roof and everything. But the cool thing is in SketchUp, it's so easy to select all the stuff you need and then just move it all at one time. So you're always able to come in here and change values 
of what you want. So I'll change my bottom plate quantity, pretending this is my basement, click update, and you'll see that it adds the second one right there on the bottom. So now that we've got that on there, um, we're able to start to lay out all of the walls the way that we want in our uh, building. And really the only thing that we need to think about is once we start to move walls around, once we've got our design the way that we want it, we're pretty much going to need to move walls around and I'm going to cover that in the next video. We're going to go through um, the way that you use the Medic plugin in order to move things because it becomes really easy to move things as opposed to what we have right here. Say, for example, here, let's see what the standard SketchUp method is. So on this, I'm going to use the standard push-pull. And we're going to pull this up. I'm going to make it a, a nine foot wall just straight right there. And we've got our geometry and I'm going to put a door frame in this. First off, I have to know the construction standards. I have to know uh, a door is going to be, um, let's see, what is it? Uh, there's my width right there. Yeah, that's the three. So let's just make this a uh, three foot door by uh, seven foot. Is actually 6.8 or something like that. So with standard SketchUp, what I have to do is this door, I can use push-pull and I can push it to the edge right here and I've got my door. And that's great and all, but in order to move this door, it's not easy to do. I can't just move the door. I have to now push-pull this a certain um, a distance. So I would have to push-pull this. So I start my push on that and say, I want to move this two feet and that means I just made a wider opening. Now I want need to do the other side. I'm going to pull it and that's going to go two feet. All right, I've moved my door and there's other plugins that make this really easy, but let me show you how easy it is on the Medic plugin. On the Medic plugin with my doors and my walls, which is so important when we're building, is I can just select this and we will go into the details on another video. I'll make my door right there and we'll dismiss that. Again, this will be covered in the next upcoming video. But all I have to do in order to move that door is simply just use the move tool. And Medic has a, a plugin for this. I'm going to be going through each one of these in the Medic settings as we learn about this. But I just click this right here. I select this. And then I have these little items down at the bottom. You can see right here where I'm able to move this door however much over I want and it just does it for me super quickly. So using a plugin like the Medic plugin to not just initially design your house, but then rearrange things is really cool. And it's the reason that I chose to go with it because it's got so many of the options that I was already familiar with as a, the son of a builder, but it just makes it so easy to move walls and uh, increase the length of walls and uh, work with your windows and work with your doors and get what you want super quickly, especially once you become familiar. And uh, that's what we'll cover in the next video. So I'll uh, see you then. Uh, remember, you can subscribe and hit the bell icon and get notified of these videos as I release them. All right, see you later.